He's still trying to get it on track here in the second half. Hand off to Melchiori, who runs into his own man, but he still skips by. Gains a few yards before Tom Beard comes up real quick, puts the hit on him. That was obviously a well-blocked play, as you can see that Arnold and Malchiori ran into each other, and I thought at that point that Wayne State may converge and make a big play defensively, but he was able to regain his balance and pick up another three, four yards after that miscue. They say, had it not been blocked well, somebody would, would have been right there to, to get on him, huh? Exactly. <laughs> you can see him slipping on the replay there. Well, big third down play for Ferris State. About two yards to go. Ball is at about the Bulldog 35. Arnold up, looking to his two men wide right. One wide left. Takes a snap, rolls left, looks, lets it fly. And the pass is complete to his big tight end, Brian Travis. Rob Zeno comes over and puts the hit on him but not until after he picks up enough yardage for the Bulldog first down. Obviously, Fair State's going to stay with their bread and butter, and that's rolling out Arnold to its left. He throws extremely well going to his left. You can see him uh, rolling out and hitting his tight end for first down. But whenever Fair State has needed a big play, they've been able to have Arnold roll out and complete the pass to someone. Uh, you wonder, is Wayne State not picking that up, or is they, are they just helpless to stop it? Well, they have to make some adjustments. You know, I, obviously Wayne State's, I'm sorry, Ferris State sees some vulnerability in that play in Wayne State's defense. That's why they keep going to it. Three wide outs on the right side for Ferris State. One lone setback. Arnold back. He hands it to that lone setback. The fullback, Benny Rowe. And he rambles for many yards before Tom Beer of Wayne State and company finally make a tackle. Tough running by Rowe. Very, very tough running. Very well blocked play as well. As you can see here, the line opened up the hole, and uh, Rowe hits it running. He sees it seam, he gets right through it, he keeps his leg moving, he goes around, he's getting hit, and he still keeps his leg running. Sign of a good running back, take it hit, and still move forward. Looked like Stanley Edwards on that one. <laughs> First and 10, Ferris State. Ball is at the Tartar 40. Quick handoff to Benny Rowe. This time, he has no success. Not that time. They say, you got us last time, but you won't get us this time. Wayne State defenders converged to him right at the line of scrimmage. Tim Brown, the first one to penetrate the backfield and get his pads on row. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Ball still at the Charter 40. A low scoring contest. We've had both teams make drives. The only scoring, a 27-yard field goal by Nick Palumbit of Wayne State. And that's been pretty much it. Ferris State trying to change that right now. Once again, Arnold rolls left, fakes the pass, looks, lets it fly. And the pass is incomplete. Tried to hit Dave Underwood. Out of bounds, Rashawn Hardy was there to defend for the Tartars. They, they had that play defended pretty well. Uh, Arnold rolled out, didn't have the room that he normally had to, to, to make the play. Uh, they, they, they covered well downfield, but they got pressure on him that time. That's what they have to do. When he's allowed to roll out and set up, he can be very dangerous. But that time, they put a little pressure on him, covered well downfield, and had an incomplete pass. Well, this has been the Turner's Achilles heel this game. Third and long. Ferris State has been very successful. Once again, they have a third down and ten situation. Arnold back to pass. Rolls left. Looks. Marker is down. The pass was intended for Dave Underwood, incomplete, but a marker is down. That's in the area of pass interference. I don't know if it'll be offense or defense. Holding is the call against the Charters. <laughs> Here's Fair State's <laughs> It's kind of loving to put themselves in a third and long situation because Quite often this afternoon, when they got in third long situations, they converged on it. Well, you wonder if they should just down the ball on first and second down and, <laughs> and go for the third and ten. They've been so successful. It may not have been a bad idea, because they've been doing very well in third and long. First and ten, Ferris State ball now at the Tartar 30-yard line. And, boy, you can see the steam rolling out of the ears of uh, Coach Van Gorder. Very unhappy with that penalty. You cannot bail a team out like that. They put themselves in a third and long situation. They have to beat you to get out that situation. Do not bail them out. You heard Stanley Edwards say it. The team that scores first in the second half often gets the momentum. Tartars very much would like to keep them off the scoreboard on this drive. 
Handoff real quick to Benny Rowe. Goes around the left side. Runs out of room. He's hit by Beer and Tony Hawk. Wayne State did a good job to string, string that play out. As you can see here, he bounced outside. <clears throat> the defensive back came up and didn't make the tackle, but he forced him to go a lot wider, which allowed the rest of the defenders to come on and put a big hit on him and knock him out of bounds. So the defensive end did his job. Did his job very well that time. Gain of about two yards on the play. Second down and eight. Ball is at the 28 of the Tartars. Makes the handoff to Malchiori, rolls right, looks right, throws it. Wide open is Dave Underwood. Tony Hawk makes the tackle for Wayne State, but not until after. Mr. Underwood picks up enough yardage for a first down and more. As you see here, Arnold had no pressure as he rolled out right, let it fly, and there was no one around Underwood when he caught that pass. What I think Wayne State's going to start after doing is when they see that action in the backfield, they're going to anticipate it. They're going to have to start blitzing off the corners. Once they allow Arnold to roll that way, he's been very effective. You're going to have to stop him in his tracks and keep him in the pocket. Send a, a linebacker or maybe someone from the secondary to keep him in the pocket. First and 10, Ferris at the 14. A quick hitter up to Benny Rowe down the middle. And he rambles for several yards before finally being brought down by Rob Zeno. And that looks like it may be close to another first down. Just short, a gain of nine yards, second and one. Ball is at the five-yard line of Wayne State. So the Bulldogs are knocking at the door. I'm quite sure this can be a concern for Coach Van Gorda. They have been stopping the run up the middle all in the first half. And now we're starting to get a little soft up in there. They can't afford them to bleed yardage up the middle. The Ferris State now can go for a first down or a touchdown. <laughs> Wish they just got the first down. Malchiori gets the ball over the right side. Excellent move by Malchiori. That's a sign of a good halfback who can give you a leg and take it away in the open field. First and goal for Ferris State. First and goal for the three. We have three players, Melvin Coleman and two others going into the lineup for the Tartars as they get close to this goal line stand defense. Ferris State sends three receivers wide left, a lone setback to fullback row in the back as a timeout is called by the officials. Well, the score is Wayne State 3, Ferris State 0, but the Bulldogs are knocking at the door. And we'll be back with more Wayne State football after this message. Get me a big, fresh breakfast. Big and fresh. No, I want the new big boy weekday breakfast bar, only $2.99. Scrambled eggs, fresh fruit, biscuits, bacon, pancakes, all I can eat, $2.99. Try, Snookums. I'm trying. Peach fuzz, I want the big boy weekday breakfast bar for $2.99. Try harder. <laughs> I want big boy. Why didn't you say so? Slamming. Jamming. Fancy passing. Thrills. A kinder, gentler game. Swings on Lambeer, caught a good. They're going at it. Not. Catch all the action. Call for Piston season ticket packages. Well, as you can see, the metal of the Wayne State Tartar defense is about to be tested. First and goal, Ferris State. Ball is at the Wayne State three with the score. The Tartars three, Ferris State zero. But can the Tartars hold on to the lead? One wide out left, one wide right for Ferris State. Quarterback Arnold over the ball gets it back. 
quick handoff to the fullback row, but he doesn't make it. Eric Ruth, the first one to hit him. Bring tight end, two tight ends in this situation. Here's a pretty good indication is it, that they're going to try to pound it up the middle there. Had rolled the single set back in the backfield with two wideouts. Well, so far, so good for the charter defense. Second and goal. A gain of, let's see where they spot the ball. Of about a yard on the play. Second and goal ball is at the Tartar two. And they're in a straight eye. Three backs lined up behind the quarterback in a row. He hits the third back. Fumbled. Fumbled and recovered by Ferris State in the end zone. A touchdown for the Bulldogs. And oh my. The Tartar defense was right there when the ball was given to Andrew Diggins. They forced a fumble. But it appears that a Ferris State player recovered it in the end zone. One official signaled for a touchdown. Several of the Ferris State players signaled for a touchdown. Now, right now, it looks like there may be some confusion as to exactly what happened. I think they're going to say he was down on the one-yard line. Coach Van Gorder pleading his case, and they're saying that it was recovered on the one-yard line now. I think he was down by contact on the one-yard line. So the Tartars dodge a bullet on that one. Third and goal, Ferris State ball is at the Tartar one. And here we go. Hand off to 44. Andrew Diggins. And he pounds it over the right side. This time it's legitimate. Touchdown, Ferris State. Well, that one hurts. Play pretty good defense for two plays. Well, well, at least hold him to a field goal. Well, Diggins is a six foot one, 228 pound sophomore. And he just got the ball and ran hard over the right side. Pounded it in. And it's a touchdown Ferris State. Now the extra point attempt is no good. Jason Lipke got the kick off, but it's no good. That's an important miss for the Tartars. One field goal, and they can tie this game up. So the score is now Ferris State 6, Wayne State 3, and we'll be back with more Tartar football after this message. working hard and making it turn out right made in america that means a lot to me oh i believe in america and american quality salute with pride what all Americans know in their hearts. The American workers' commitment to quality is stronger today than ever. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Nothing beats the quality of the American spirit. Well, the score is Ferris State 6, Wayne State 3. The good news for Ferris State is that their fullback, Andrew Diggins, took the ball at the Wayne State Tartar one-yard line, ran over the right side, and was able to power his way into the end zone. As you see here, he was the third back to come through, and he just made a quick move right, gets into the end zone, and put Ferris State on the scoreboard. The, the bad news is then place kicker Jason Lipke goes up for an extra point attempt, and it's no good. So the score is now 6-3 to three, Ferris State, meaning that Wayne State can tie it with a field goal, certainly go ahead with a touchdown, and a touchdown and an extra point would really put Ferris State in a bad way. We'll see what happens now. Got a couple of good return men back there in Johnson and Hawk. See if the special teams can make a big play for Wayne State here. Randondo Johnson and Tony Hawk deep for Wayne State to receive the kickoff. 
Darren Miner lets it go and it's taken by Johnson. He runs left and slowed down by a Ferris player just enough for the rest of the Bulldogs to collar him and tackle him. Wayne Boggs in on that tackle for the Bulldogs. And the Tartars will now see if they can answer the score by Ferris State. First and 10, Wayne State. Ball is at the Tartar 33. It's pretty good field position. Friday back, looks over the middle, throws. Pass was a little bit short intended for Jensen. And had it hung up there a little bit more, Rich Eish might have had an interception for Ferris State. But it turns out to be an incomplete pass. Second down and 10 for the Tartars. Ball still at the Wayne State 33. Here you can see uh, Friday rolling out. He cuts his roll short because you see tight end come across the middle. Ball's a little bit low. I think the ball should have been up a little bit higher, although I think the tight end possibly could have came up with that catch. This juncture of the ball game, they need to get some first downs because last series, uh, Fair State controlled the ball for an awfully long time. They say if you can get your hands on it, you're supposed to catch it. On the other hand, it's real hard to catch it off of your shoe tops. Friday rolls right on the option, and he keeps the ball. Fair State keeps him. Wayne State's offense has been on the sideline for quite some time. It could be a little stiff, could be a little rusty here. They're going to have to start moving. As you can see here, Friday coming down here on the option. The pitch man was covered, and so was the quarterback. He did a good job by not trying to pitch and make a, and make a bad play a lot worse than it already was. Uh, put the ball away and, and lose yardage, but you get to start over. At least he still has an opportunity with third and 11 coming up here on third down. Better to give up the yards than give up the football. Exactly. By, by the way, Ferris's missed field goal was its fifth in a row in the last four years versus Wayne State. Friday pass is complete. The tackle made by Brent Weiss. The pass goes to Randondo Johnson, who was wide open in the left flat, but he does not gain enough yards to make a Wayne State first down. I think this is a good call by Van Gordon here to go ahead and punt it. Uh, you're, you're in your own territory. You don't want to miss the first down by going for it on fourth down and giving the ball to Fair State in your territory. I would not go for it here. Later on in the game, you may have to go for it, but it's a good uh, uh, job, I think, to punt the ball right here. Still plenty of time in this game in the third quarter. Eric Burton is back to punt for the Charters. Now this time, Excellent two punt. men sent deep for Fair State. Excellent punt. Frank Kostopoulos went back deep to get it, and he goes nowhere. Rashawn Hardy was down there real quick and made an excellent open field tackle on Kostopoulos. Good special teams coverage. As you can see here, he gets a good foot into this ball, kicks a nice spiral. And what tends to happen sometimes when you get a good punt like that, you outpunt your coverage. But you have the, the, the guys coming down on the, on the punt coverage. They really got downfield in good fashion and was able to catch up with the punter and not allow a good return by Ferris State. Rashawn Hardy really played that the way you're supposed to, but give credit to Eric Burton, the 6'1", 180-pound sophomore. He really got a nice punt up there. Back to live action, a quick handoff to roll the fullback who gains a few yards before meeting a wall of charter tacklers. You don't want to allow Ferris State to get that kind of yardage on first down. Now you put it in a second five, can run or pass. You have to get, keep them to at least two yards minimum on first down, and then you can take, make some gambles on defense. Now you got to be careful here. But Stan, how superstitious are football players? Uh, two superstitious. If you won last week and you had a certain pair of socks on, you probably put that same pair of socks on, possibly <laughs> without watching it. I'll tell you why I asked in just a second. Second down and about six for Ferris State. Arnold back, has time, looks over the middle, throws, lets it fly, and oh my goodness, it hits the hands of three players, the last one being Tom Beer of Wayne State, before it bounces incomplete. And boy, you've got three disappointed players out there right now. Well, Arnold for sure put a zip on this ball because it almost went through the whole uh, offense and defensive hand. He stepped up in the pocket here. He had a guy open, went through one Wayne State's hand, now through a Ferris State, and then last through Tony Hawk's hands. Uh -oh. Had a lot of steam on that ball. I'm glad I wasn't on the receiving end of that one. <laughs> then from another angle, you see that very close to an interception by Tim Brown, then a reception by the Ferris State player, and then by Tony Hawk of the Tartars before it falls harmless. So it's third and six. A quick pass from Arnold. This time is caught by Jamie Moore. 
and he's tackled by Rob Zeno after making enough yards for the first down. And I tell you, Arnold's stats in the first half were not great, but he has not been uh, unimpressive in this game. What happened here in the second half, and uh, a great a great job by uh, Fair State coaching staff, is they're mixing their plays up fine here in the second half. They're running draws, they're running and passing. They got Wayne State's defense off on the heels a little bit, not knowing what to expect. First and 10, Ferris State, they took their last drive down and scored a touchdown, and they're moving once again. Hand off to Melchiori over the right side. Turns the corner, makes a few guns. yards before he's cut down by Rashawn Hardy. Curry seems to have problems with, with his foot. He slips down once again, but not after gaining five yards. Second and down and five. Cannot afford to let him get that kind of yardage on first down. The reason I asked you about superstition, that stat I read, that Ferris has missed its last five field goals, five ex field goal attempts in four years against Wayne State. You wonder if they're superstitious or have a mental block against kicking against the Tartars. Arnold rolls left, throws left, and that pass is complete to Dave Underwood, tackled by Tony Hawk. Well, they may be superstitious on kicking field goals, but not when, <laughs> when Arnold's rolling out, because they, they've been extremely successful with that play. They have to get upfield and keep Arnold in the pocket, because he's very dangerous in rolling out. It's, it's extremely dangerous rolling to his left, which is difficult for a right-hand quarterback to do. As you can see, another completion for Ferris State. Stan, you talked about pass defense adjustments. What adjustments can you make? Well, like I said, I think you have to get upfield. You have to keep Arnold in the pocket. And I would have to blitz him. They haven't blitzed him a lot today. I would have to put some pressure on him. Once again, Arnold completes the pass to Dave Underwood. Tony Hawk with the tackle, but not until there's a pickup of close to 15 yards, certainly more than enough for a first down. They made him pay for that. As you can see here, uh, Arnold's flushed out of the pocket. He finds Underwood over the middle, but when Underwood makes his pass, here comes some serious collision coming. That's how you fly to the football. Uh, he was tough and hanging on to the pass. Great hit by the Wayne State defenders, but you cannot let him move down the field like that. You have to put some pressure on Arnold. They're going to start sending some people, maybe some backers, a couple of safeties here and there. He's got too much time. The First and 10 fair state ball is at the Tartar 35. Handoff up the middle and a pile of tacklers and blockers. Coming from under the pile. Come on, D -line, shut the ball. Looks like Fair State is uh, starting to get a little bit of the momentum going here in the second half. Wayne State is starting to play not to lose here on defense, and they're not really uh, stopping the run. If this continues, you're going to have to really start gambling here on defense. You don't want to have to play that way. Benny Rowe picked up four yards on that play. Second and six. Ball is at the Tartar 31. Wide setback right comes in towards the line. He is a handoff. Oh, my goodness. Joe Golazuski was in on the play. The handoff was to Jerron Johnson, but before he could get the ball good, Golazuski was all on top of him. Excellent defensive play. He got good penetration, as you see, just blew right by his man. And Jeronson goes nowhere. Couldn't come at a better time because Fair State had been moving the ball up and down the field on the ground and through the arrow on Wayne State. And he needed a big play to come up, and, and Golazusis came up with it. So with that tackle for a loss, it goes back to third and 10, close to third and 11. And how much you want to bet that uh, Arnold passes on this play? I got a feeling he'll probably be rolling out as well. He rolls out left, lets it fly. Oh, my goodness. Into the hands of Kostopoulos. Out of the hands of Kostopoulos. Todd Hanush on the coverage for Wayne State. Incomplete pass, fourth and ten. And here is Arnold right in your face. As you can see, it puts a lot of zip on the ball. Tough catch, but in this situation, you got to expect the receiver to make that play. Uh, Fair State has, has been very successful with that play all, all game, but... They didn't, weren't able to capitalize at that particular time. Now he forced Fair State into a punting situation here. Important stop for Wayne State. Very important stop. I think they were starting to look around and wonder what was happening to their defense because they started to bend a little bit. Punt from Eric Stevens. Oh, my God. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Is short and just the way they want it. Yeah. And it is down within the 
five yard line of Wayne State. The Tartars would take over deep in the territory of their own side of the field. First and 10 at the four. We invite you to tune in to our next Tartar football telecast in two weeks on Saturday, October 10th at 1.30 p.m. when the Butler Bulldogs visit Tartar Field. Butler took the Midwest Intercollegiate Football Conference title last year when they were undefeated with a 9-0 record. Coach Van Gorder and his Tartar certainly have their work cut out for themselves, but are up to the challenge. And by the way, it's the Tartar's 56th homecoming day. So tune in for the game and all the festivities two weeks from now on Saturday, October 10th, when the Butler Bulldogs take on the Wayne State Tartars at 1.30 p.m. here on TV 62. Five -0, five -0. Try Joe Goff on the right side over there. Only picked up a couple of yards there. I think they're going to have to open up the offense a little bit here. They're starting to uh, get a little bit conservative. Time is running. They're going to have to get the ball out of that territory. Even if they don't get a field goal or any points out of it, they can ill afford to punt back there inside their end zone. They're going to have to at least try to get the ball past midfield. So you're going to have to open up the offense a little bit and move the ball downfield. Wayne State is down 6-3 to three in third quarter. Quick handoff to Golf, who gained some yards over the right side before being tackled by Akil Young. Got a little more breathing room there. It's a big third down play coming up here. They can't be too conservative. They have to get a first down and get out of that position. They cannot afford to give the ball to Fair State on this side of the 50-yard line. Fair State has been controlling the ball. They got momentum. Fair State has moved the ball extremely well on the ground and through the air. So I don't expect for Wayne State to be conservative on his third down play. Well, that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Ferris State Bulldogs 6, the Wayne State Tartars 3. We'll be right back after these commercial messages from our local station. This is the Wayne State Football Television Network. How come when you get out of the rain, your wet umbrella gets you drenched? Some umbrella. You could have been carrying the wetless umbrella. It's a dry idea from Main Street Marketing. No matter how much rain falls on your wetless umbrella, just a few quick shakes and it's dry. The secret is DuPont Teflon. Only the wetless umbrella has it. Look, ordinary umbrellas soak up water, just like your clothing. But the wetless with DuPont Teflon just rolls the water away. As you'd expect, this remarkable umbrella features high-quality construction. It opens automatically at the touch of a button and folds up conveniently when you're through with it. Why let a wet umbrella soak everything it touches? And why put up with hallway puddles while it's drying? The wetless umbrella dries in two shakes and is ready in seconds to store safely away. No wet car seats. No wet clothing. No wet anything. The wetless umbrella comes in two styles and colors, black for men, red for women. Both keep you dry when it's raining, and both are dry in seconds as soon as you're out of the rain. If you carry an umbrella, this is the right umbrella. No other umbrella carries the name Teflon. You'll see the amazing difference only a wetless can make. Yet for all its advantages, it won't even soak you on the price. Choose either the men's or women's wetless for only $19.99. Or save $5 and get them both for just $34.99. Come in out of the rain and order now. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-862-7100. Order either the men's or women's wetless for $19.99 plus $3.95 shipping and handling or save $5 and get them both. The men's and ladies for $34.99 plus $4.95 shipping and handling or send check or money order to Wetless Umbrella P.O. Box 846-GP Valley Stream, New York 11580. For fastest delivery, call 1-800-862-7100. We're back at Wayne State Stadium at the start of the fourth quarter, where the score is the Ferris State Bulldogs 6, the Wayne State Tartars 3 in Midwest Intercollegiate Football Conference action. Hello, I'm Cliff Russell, your play-by-play -play person, and I'm here with Stanley Edwards, who's doing color for you in this game. Tartar football, third and about, oh, let's say, three or four. Ball is down at their own nine-yard line. Quarterback Friday... Fake the handoff, rolled left, and tries to get it to Ray Ponder, but no good. Nathaniel Kuehling has been all over Ponder for this entire game, Stan. I think when you're going to run a play like that, and, and, I, and I noticed the way that 
uh, Fair State runs with honor. When you're going to roll the quarterback out, he's got to get off the line of scrimmage. He's got to get back and allow himself some room to survey the field. As close as he is to the line of scrimmage, he only had an opportunity to look at one receiver. There were a couple other guys that were open that he didn't even get a chance to see him because he's too close to the line of scrimmage. If he gets back off the line of scrimmage, he has a better vision of the field and possibly could have found an open receiver for the first down. Is that what makes a good quarterback one who has the best vision? Anytime you can have a second or third choice, you always allow yourself an opportunity to make a big play. Well, the Tartar's choice right now is to get off another beautiful punt from Eric Burton, taken by Kustupolis, who feels the punt, gains some yards, and he is tackled, though, by Rashawn Hardy before he goes too far. This has been a difference of the game in the second half. Fair State has always started in Wayne State's territory. You cannot afford to give them the ball first and ten at the beginning of their series in your territory. Field position is going to play a big part in a low-scoring game. They're going to start making some more first downs. Wayne State, I'm speaking up, and make sure that uh, Fair State starts deep in their own territory. Well, we'll see what the Bulldogs do with the ball now as we will come back to Tartar football action after these messages. Jimmy Harris, welcome back. Seen Coach Green lately? I never thought that man would retire. He used to say, Harris, tackling is like life. Hit it head on. Harris. Coach Green. Coach Harris. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. So, you got any advice? Harris, coaching is like life. Hit it head on. Feeling pressure to make life more productive? Relax. HAP keeps more people well than any HMO in Michigan. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. When it comes to health care costs, you can open wide or say ah. With HAP, you can enjoy no deductibles, co-pays, or out-of-pocket costs. Health Alliance Plan. Your health deserves the best. Slamming. Jamming. Fancy passing. Thrills. A kinder, gentler day. Swings on Lambeer, caught a good. They're going at it. Not. Catch all the action. Call for Piston season ticket packages. Front behind. Well, the score here at Wayne State Stadium with 14.41 left in the fourth quarter is Ferris State 6, Wayne State 3. And Ferris State has the ball with good field position, first and 10 at the Charter 44. Quick handoff to Melchiori of the Bulldogs. He gets maybe a yard before the Charters tackle him. In on the tackle was big number 90, Darren King of Wayne State. Like Wayne State defense may be a little bit fired up here. See if they can get a three down and punt series here defensively. No gain on that play. Second down and 10 ball still at the 44. Fake to the second back through. Rolls right. Arnold, look, lets it fly. He throws it out of bounds. Looks like he may have been intending to just get rid of that ball. Beer had a beat on him. Beer had him his number. He was taken off trying to get a sack. Uh, good play by Arnold to throw it out of bounds to avoid the sack. But great pressure by Wayne State defensive Beer in particular. As you can see the replay, Arnold rolling right, as he's been doing all day, rolling. And he just let that one fly. Here we go in that third lump. <laughs> Predicament of gear. For Fair State. Let's see if Wayne State has finally found we three right outs to the right. Melchiori rolls left. Arnold straight back. Look, Here we oh go. my goodness. That's it. He couldn't get that pass off. Not this time. Nice sack by the Charters. Not this time. That's a big emotional play for Wayne State because in third and long, they've been getting burned pretty much the whole game. Bernard, as you see here, Bernard Evans gets a bead on Arnold, gets away from his man and just levels him. The defensive line pinned their ears back on that particular play because they got pressure from all sides. It didn't allow him to get out of the pocket and roll and make a big play. 
So that means a punt by Eric Stevens. Fair catch called for by Ebby Herbert. And the Tartars take over in their own territory. Again, the score, Ferris State 6, Wayne State 3. And we'll be back with more Tartar football after this message. My brother, about to become a father. So how big can a crib be? Season tickets went on sale today, Mike. Yeah. Well, maybe next year. You've got five years straight. Yeah. Is this about the kid? This kid's getting for free, you know. He's gonna be a little tight. Mike, this year's on me. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Now, the new little guy's going to every game, right? Bobby, he could be a girl. A girl? Snookums, get me a big, fresh breakfast. Big and fresh. No, I want the new big boy weekday breakfast bar, only $2.99. Scrambled eggs, fresh fruit, biscuits, bacon, pancakes, all I could eat, $2.99. Try, Snookums. I'm trying. Peach fuzz, I want the big boy weekday breakfast bar for $2.99. Try harder. <laughs> I want big boy. Why didn't you say so? Mint condition, good condition, binders, wax packs, sleeves. How can anybody sort this sports cards hobby out? With the ABCs of Sports Trading Cards, the first comprehensive videotape on card collecting. Now you too can know all the facts that have built collections worth thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Call 313-377-8680. It's a perfect gift and only $19.95. Call 313-377-8680. Have Discover, MasterCard, or Visa ready. Call 313-377-8680. The Wayne State University Tartars have 13 minutes and 21 seconds to turn the score around. They're down to Ferris State 6-3 here at Charter Stadium. Hello, everybody. I'm Cliff Russell, along with Stanley Edwards, as the Wayne State Tartars have the ball first and 10 at their own 16. And my goodness, there was almost an interception by Brian Carmody there. Pride tried to get the ball to Ponder, and Carmody was all over it. As you can see here on the replay, Friday's they run a quick slant into Ponder. You have to be real careful with that play. That play is either going to go for a big play offensively or for a big play defensively. Carmody had a, had a beat on the ball. Had he made the interception and kept his feet, he could have walked, lost into the end zone. i tell you, Ponder is the big play receiver for Wayne State, but Ferris State has been all over him this game. Friday rolls left. Was it caught in bounds? Apparently it was. An excellent pass from Friday to Richard Hall right in front of the Wayne State bench. Darren Blunt with the tackle for Ferris State, but it is caught in bounds, and there are enough yards for a first down Wayne State. Here we go to replay from the sideline view. You can see that he did get the fo foot in bounds. It's an excellent throw and catch by Friday and Hall to get the first down for Wayne State. Are receivers trained to go down like that when they're close to the sideline? Well, most important thing is that if you know you're in, you're in bounds, catch the football. Make sure your body is in level with the football so you can make the reception. Boy, a little razzle-dazzle there from the Tartars. Now, the crowd and some of the Tartar players are saying there was interference. Nathaniel Kuehling was on the covers for Ferris State. I think the referee made an excellent no call there because the ball was severely underthrown and it wasn't a very catchable pass. It appeared that it was pass interference, but with a ball that's that, that severely underthrown, the receiver had no chance of making the play. In case you missed it, Friday handed the ball off to Whitfield, who then attempted to complete a pass downfield. It fell incomplete. And so it is second down and 10 for the Tartars. Ball is at their own 33. Everybody got a little confused up here. I wasn't sure where the ball was well. That was an excellent fake by Friday. I was trying to figure it out. Golf got the ball. Everybody was fooled but big Jim Lenz of Ferris State. He made the tackle. Gain of a couple of yards. Third down and eight. Ball is at the Tartar 35. Friday rolls right. Looks downfield, comes back left. Oh, and he falls down again. One Ferris State player got a hand on him, but 
he got away and then the Bulldogs in pursuit were able to tackle him. Monty Brown and Steve Houghton got their hands on him and brought him down. As you can see on the replay, it was an excellent uh, coverage sack, if I, if I could say that, because he had a little time to look downfield, although he got a little pressure right there. There was really no one downfield for him to throw it to because the receivers were covered by the Fair State defenders. So we have a fourth down punting situation for Wayne State. Eric Burton, who's gotten off several beautiful punts today, back to punt once again. This one's high and long. Bounces, but it takes a Ferris State bounce. Finally, knocked out of bounds and down by Wayne State. Todd Hanouche was the first one down there to get a hand on it. Ferris State has the ball and the lead, 6-3 to three against Wayne State. We'll be back with more Charter football after this message. If I thought that no one cared about the things I do in life, well, I'd still care about working hard and making it turn out right. Made in America, that means a lot to me. Oh, I believe in America and American quality. We salute with pride what all Americans know in their hearts. The American workers' commitment to quality is stronger today than ever. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Nothing beats the quality of the American spirit. 11 minutes, 30 seconds remaining in this contest. Here at Wayne State Stadium, Ferris State has a 6-3 lead over the Wayne State Tartars. The Bulldogs also have the ball at their own 37-yard line. And the Tartars are really going to have to get going and do something if they're going to pull a win out of this one. Three wideouts left, but the handoff goes to Benny Rowe, the fullback, who goes right. Rob Zeno makes the tackle. The initial hit was made by Tom Beer. Rowe Ro picks up good yardage along the, uh, the right side. As you can see him breaking off the right end, picking up about five yards, four to five yards. Uh, it would appear that Ferris State's going to try to eat up a little time on that clock and uh, run the ball. But I wouldn't be uh, all surprised if they did a little play action in there and try to hit him deep for a big play, try to catch Wayne State sleeping. He gained about four yards on that play, second down and six. The ball at the 41 of Ferris State. Again, another running play. This one goes wide left. Jerron Johnson is able to get outside the corner before finally being tackled by Tom Beer. But he gained some yards on that play. Pickup of about five makes it third and one. Jerron Johnson back up tailback. Picks up uh, ample yards around the left end over there. See, he's only 5'8 as well. This would be a prerequisite to be under six feet to play tailback <laughs> in Ferris State's backfield. One of those short, quick guys. Yeah. Handoff goes to Johnson once again. He picks up more than enough for a first down before being tackled by Ebby Herbert. Well, it looks like Ferris State's just going to pound it out here. They got a, it's still a lot of time on the clock. They're going to try to chew away at that clock and see if they can uh, move the ball downfield, play conservatively, not make any mistakes back there in their own territory, and make, and make uh, Wayne State take some gambles here. They really want to take some time off that clock. They really do. First and 10, ball is at the 50 for Ferris State. Arnold back, gives the handoff. To Johnson once again. Tom Beer makes the tackle. Excellent open field tackle by Beer. 
I thought Johnson was going to be in the corner for a while. Had up enough momentum. And here you can see on the replay, Johnson breaks around outside. I thought he was going to turn up field, and Beer comes out of nowhere and makes an excellent open field tackle. It's real difficult to do when you get a back running like that on his own. He picked up a couple of yards. Let's make it second down and eight. Ball is at the 48 of the Tartars. They're in Wayne State territory. Two wide outs left. A single back. Arnold takes the snap. Rolls left. Let's it fly. And it is complete down the left sideline to Frank Kostopoulos. And a touchdown saving tackle from Tony Hawk. But after Mr. Hawk was burned for that long completion. Give excellent credit to the Fair State Bulldogs offensive line. Gave Arnold enough time to roll out and set up and hit Kostopoulos going down the side. I'm not sure who had deep coverage on that side over there, but he had gotten past and gotten behind everyone. Good saving tackle by Tony Hawk there. A great job by Frank Kostopoulos and the quarterback uh, Arnold and the Fair State Bulldogs offensive line. Well, boy, that really hurts the Tartars. They would have loved to have gotten the ball back and stopped them, but at the very least make Ferris State take some time and work for their yards. Ferris gets a big chunk in that. It's first and goal now to three. And the touchdown man once again, Andrew Diggins, goes over the left side. Touchdown, his second touchdown of the day. That one's going to hurt there. That one's really going to hurt. Fair State has pounded the ball downfield all day. They've been real successful in a short yard situation. Although Wayne State had been in the game. It's not that they're out of it now. That's going to make it a little bit difficult. Still got a lot of time left. But you can't dig a hole like this for yourself and expect to come back in a half a quarter. Coach Brian Van Gorder, obviously upset, trying to figure out exactly what went wrong on that pass play. They're going for two. Get it. Arnold back, looks right, rolls left, lets the ball go, and it's good. Two-point conversion is good. He hit big Gerald Prees. Well, that makes up for the extra point that was missed, the kicking attempt earlier. And the score now goes to 14-3, to Ferris State. That makes it difficult for, uh, for Wayne State now. They're going to have to score it at least twice to get back in the ball game. They haven't been moving the ball well. They've been a little bit conservative on offense. They're going to have to really pick it up here real soon. Now, here was the first touchdown of the game. It's very interesting. They bring in Mr. Andrew Diggins. Four touchdowns, it appears. He goes right over the left side. That is Diggins' second touchdown of the day. He hasn't played much, but he's come in and scored two touchdowns, both touchdowns for the Ferris State team. And here we see the two-point attempt as Arnold looked left or looked right through left, and big Gerald Preece makes the catch, and the score goes to 14-3. to three. It's not a bad idea to go for two-point conversions for a couple of reasons for Ferris State. They haven't been kicking the ball well for field goals and extra points. Uh, plus, you make it difficult as you have to have two scores for Fair State to come back and take the lead. What Preeves did there, he blocked down into the delay route and moved out to the left flat. Was wide open. No one even knows he's going to come out for a pass. As we see, Mr. Tony Hawk, who has played a, a good game, but was burned on that long reception. Or at least he was the last man back there. He's waiting for the kickoff now. From Darren Miner. Also back deep to receive the kick for Wayne State is Randano Johnson. Again, the score, Ferris State 14, Wayne State 3, and here's the kickoff. It goes to Tony Hawk. He takes it at about the 10, cuts toward the middle of the field, and he's met by the first wave of tacklers. Oh, and one of the officials somehow went down there. Don't know how that happened. He looked like a late tackler. Yeah. Guess he wanted to get in a little action himself. <laughs> oh, oh, we hope he's all right. Back. Yeah. He put his white hat back on and uh, signals first down Wayne State. Apparently he's okay. Couldn't resist joining in on the fun, huh? 
<laughs> Not at all. He thought he'd get in there and get him a hit in, too. <laughs> First and 10, Wayne State ball is at the Tartar 28. They're looking to score and score quickly. Friday takes the ball, fakes the handoff, goes right, and he hits his man, Kevin Whitfield, but he goes nowhere. Brian Carmody right there to put the pads on him. Nine, a little over nine minutes left. It's still a good enough time to get, go down and get two scores. But they're going to have to score now because this time is going to start moving pretty fast here. Uh, see, they fast passed there on first down. As you can see, he hit uh, Whitfield in the, in, in the flat there. They're going to really have to start opening this offense up to move downfield. They don't want it to, the clock to be their enemy. At the start of this game, those short passes to Whitfield were working, but apparently Ferris State has made the adjustments, and that play simply was not there. Friday again, back rolls left. He's got a little time, a little room. He lets it go. And the pass is complete to his big tight end, Richard Hall. Big hit put on by Brian Carmody. But Hall holds onto the ball, gets up, and a first down for Wayne State. Here you can see right there on the weed play, Friday rolling out. Sees Hall dragging across the middle. Hall takes a big hit from the safety uh, for Fair State. But look at it one way. You're going to get hit, so you might as well hold on to the football. Excellent catch and throw by, from Friday to Hall. First and 10, Wayne State ball is at the Turner 46. Friday calls timeout there. Apparently, they got their signals mixed up. You know, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank the fine people at Anheuser-Busch for sponsoring this, our fourth season of Tartar Football Television. They've been with us each and every year. We'd also like to thank Health Alliance Plan for returning for their second year of sponsorship of Tartar Television. And we'd also like to welcome a new sponsor this year, Elias Brothers Big Boy Restaurants. The proceeds of our Tartar Football telecast help benefit the Tartar Gridiron Club and the Wayne State football program. So we thank you very much for sponsoring Tartar Football. Well, again, the score, Ferris State 14, Wayne State 3. And throughout the first half, a close contest. Wayne State had a 3 to nothing uh, lead for a long time. But Ferris State comes back, puts up 14 points on the board. And Stanley Edwards, I tell you, the game has really turned around and the Bulldogs have the momentum. At this juncture of the game, you don't have anything to, to save. You might as well go for it. Yeah, you better flip that playbook and go back to some little razzle-dazzle plays, maybe a reverse or two here, reverse pass. You're behind, you might as well go for it. But with 8.24 left to do it, Friday goes back, tries to get a pass over to Whitfield. No good. That'll make it second down and 10 for the Charters. Monty Brown was on the coverage for Ferris State, and Monty Brown is one of those guys who has been all over the field this game. Oh, Friday's down. He could be hurt. Quarterback Friday is down. He's being looked at by a trainer. Coach Van Gorder coming out on the field to check out his junior star quarterback. Here's a replay see if we can see what happened. As he released the ball, you see a Ferris State defender. Looks like he possibly could have landed on his leg. It's hard to tell because you're almost out of the picture there. You don't want to lose your starting quarterback in, in this particular part of the game because whoever the backup quarterback is, and I see him warming up down there. Well, the backup quarterback is Anthony Frederick, who actually started last game. Did he really? Uh, did not have the success that Coach Van Gorder would have liked, so Friday came in the game late but not in time to rally Wayne State. They still lost to Valpo down at Valparaiso. Well, Frederick obviously has some experience, but sometimes it's difficult to ask for someone who's been sitting on the sideline for the past two, two and a half hours to come in and take over and win the game for you. Well, especially at a crucial point in the game like this where Wayne State, if they're going to have to, to, to get something going, they're going to have to do it now. But uh, the good players, I guess, are always ready, and... They come into play whenever they have to. You look at the scoring by quarters. Wayne State had a three to nothing lead, and that defense looked very, very strong. But then Ferris State had a crucial drive in the third quarter. They went down, capped off by a touchdown plunge by Andrew Diggins. And then that was repeated in the fourth quarter. The big play in the fourth quarter was a pass from Doug Arnold to Frank Kostopoulos down the left sideline for Ferris State. That would have been a touchdown were it not for a saving tackle by Tony Hawk. 
But on the next play, Mr. Andrew Diggins took the ball, went in, and then the two-point conversion was good, a pass from Arnold to Gerald Preece. And that has made the score 14-3, to Ferris State. Tartar's ball, and yes, uh, we do have a new quarterback in the game for Wayne State, Anthony Frederick in. Comes in, first play, he fumbles, and the ball is recovered by Kevin Whitfield. Chad Richard helped to force that fumble by Ferris State. I know Fredericks want to come back in and get in good graces with, with, the, with the coach. Uh, that's not the way to do it, coming in and fumbling on your first play. I uh, wish he uh, just protect the ball a little bit better because they can ill afford those type of plays at, at this juncture of the game. And I know he wants to play. I know he wants to do good. He's probably a little bit down on himself from being benched from last week. And I know he's the type of person that don't want the opportunity to play because of an injury to a, a teammate of his. But he has to come in and see if he can move this ball club. Well, what makes it worse is that he had a couple of fumbles last week that uh, went back for score. So that's part of the problem. And here, he makes a pass to Ray Ponder, which is caught. Nathaniel Kuehling on the coverage, but not until after. A pickup of about 10 yards by Ray Ponder. In fact, a little bit more than 10 yards. Here you can see on the replay, uh, Frederick's rolling out. That was kind of a lame duck a little bit, but the ball gets there, and Ponders makes the catch. May not have been the prettiest pass in the world, but it got there. Anthony Frederick, a freshman quarterback, so he has a lot of snaps to take here at Wayne State, and certainly he's undergoing a trial by fire right now. Fourth down for Wayne State, so Eric Burton is in the punt. And by the way, Mark Friday, the quarterback for Wayne State, we understand, had an injury to his leg last week. He apparently has aggravated that injury. The extent of that aggravation, we don't know, but we'll check on that. Mike Jensen down for Wayne State to make the tackle. The punt was taken by the guy who's been doing it all day, playing a good game, Frank Kosopoulos, but uh, he goes nowhere on that one. So Ferris State has the ball once again. They have the lead, 14-3. to Excellent coverage by uh, Wayne State's uh, punt coverage team. They got the ball down there. They got him to tackle inside the 10-yard line. Let's see if they can get three downs and force them to punt here deep in their own territory. We have seven minutes and ten seconds left in this contest. Arnold hands the ball off very quickly to his big fullback, Benny Rowe. Nice gesture by the official, not throwing the flag on that play. <laughs> <laughs> had he thrown the flag, what would it have been for? Twelve men on the field. It's like Wayne State had twelve men on the field. Guy was trying to rush off. At one foot inbound, one foot out of bound. I guess the referee didn't think it was going to be significant in the play, so he didn't throw the flag. Rob Zeno made the tackle for Wayne State, but not until a pickup of seven yards. Second and three. This ball goes to Malchiori, cuts on the left side, squirts up through the left side of the line. Looks like he has enough yardage for a first down. And, in fact, the official signaling first down. I would be very nervous about Malchiori carrying the ball at this juncture in the game. He hasn't really played much in the last few series and obviously if he's back in the game he's not hurt so he's probably pretty fresh but he's still loose enough to be in the flow of the game and he could be a big threat here late in the game well, Bernard Evans made the hit on that last play now here's a familiar set we've seen this game three wide outs left a single back Arnold has rolled out several times on this play and been successful oh but this time he hands it off to Mr. Driggins who, this, this is the guy who scored two touchdowns so far. He has gone straight ahead this time, tackled by Tom Beer, but not until Andrew Diggins gets a first yard, a gain of 10 yards on the play, and once again, first down for Ferris State. If Wayne State is going to come back and win this game, they're going to have to make a move real soon, and they haven't shown it yet. First and 10, Ferris State. Ball is at the Bulldog, 36. Can't be lulled to sleep with these three wide receivers here to the right. Anything can happen, such as the run up the middle by Diggins on the last play. Again, Diggins gets the ball, goes left, and keeps going to the left side. Pickup of 10 yards plus. Well, where has this guy been all game? He comes in, scores two touchdowns on short situations. They put him in the game late, and he's running like an All-American. Touchdown Diggins. He's only run the ball on short yard situations, on goal line situations early in the game. <laughs> he's got to be fresh as the Diggins. He come in, and he's ready to work now. We have word that Wayne State quarterback Mark Friday is leaving the field. He was injured in that last series for Wayne State. He had a leg injury coming into the game, and we'll check on it to see exactly uh, 
what his situation is. Now, Marker is down on the play, but Jerron Johnson just runs through the Tartar defense for a huge pickup. Flag down. Let's see what the penalty is. Coach Brian Van Gorder looking to see what that penalty was. And they're coming back. But there was a coating somewhere in the, in the interior line for the Fair State. You can see the charter players and the coaches breathing a big sigh of relief on that one. Big play by Jaronson, as you see here, he got the ball, cut left, and just squirted through that defensive uh, setup, the whole defensive scheme of Wayne State. But it is all for naught, a holding penalty. Another quick handoff right. to Benny Rowe. He's going down the field. He's at the 30, 20. He's going to score a touchdown. A touchdown play, a touchdown run by fullback Benny Rowe of Ferris State. Oh, my goodness, Stan. What happened on that play? Well, what happened is that I think that the formation has obviously did a job on um, Ferris State's defense. They put these three wideouts to the side and they spread the defense out. And what happened is that you don't have a lot of people in the, in the middle of your defense. All your secondary people are out on the side covering these three wide receivers, and there's a big hole. And if you get through that first wave of defenders, there's no one back there. He may have had one or two people put a hand on him, and he just took off and went. Well, the extra point attempt is up, and this one is good by Jason Lipke. And the score now goes to... Ferris State 21, Wayne State 3, here late in the fourth quarter. Here. You see again here that Rowe got the ball, and he was almost untouched as he scrambled <clears throat> for a touchdown. And there wasn't a Wayne State player close at all. You go see Rowe, he pops through that first wave of defenders, and there's no one in the secondary. They all come in those three wide receivers that are off to the right. And he rumbles for a 63-yard touchdown run. 63 yards on a touchdown by Benny Rowe, and that pretty much breaks the back of the Wayne State Tartars in this game, Stan. Oh, it's real difficult to come back from that now, especially when you have a young team and you haven't been playing well uh, as it was early in the day, and, and you're at home, you're excited, you're fired up for the game, and you're in the game for pretty much the most, most better part of the game, and someone to hit a 63-yard on you, that's just a big emotional letdown. Six plays, 90 yards, six points, and Benny Rowe, you saw there, very tired, but a very happy young man, scoring on a 63-yard touchdown run. So we have Darren Miner kicking off for Ferris State once again. This kickoff is taken by Randonald Johnson. Makes a move, is able to squirt it to the left side, but... Tackle made by Gary Sisler and company. See what kind of character this young Wayne State football team has. They're down 20 to 3, 21 to 3, 23. And uh, that's the time we're going to find out if you're going to fight to the last whistle or you're going to hang, fold up your tent and go home. The game's not over yet. You have to play until the referee says the game's over. Well, down 21 to 3, you see Rondono Johnson still very excited he wants to play football he goes into motion screen pass to the right goes to jensen skirts one tackler but he's brought down by that number six again monty brown that's the best linebacker on this fair state bulldogs team and one of the best in the conference is a tremendous open field tackler Anthony Frederick took the snap, looked left, rolled right, and got the screen pass off. And <laughs> after all that, no gain on the play. Second down and 10. Ball is still at the charter 41. Four minutes left in the game. Score 21-3. Ferris State over Wayne State. Charter's trying to get something going. Takes the option down the left side. Tackled by John Dubois. Frederick kept the ball himself and has a pickup of about five yards. 
Chargers need to get in and out of huddle now. They need to get on the ball and get as many plays run as they possibly can. You know, uh, they are down by, by three touchdowns. But to get back in this game, you cannot waste time. You have to get in and out of huddle and get some plays ran. Third and five, Wayne State. Frederick back, fakes the handoff. This time he rolls right, looks downfield, and he gets the pass off, and it's completed to the tight end, Jeff Henson, one of the co-captains on this team. Tackle is made by Brian Carmody, and that's good enough for a first down. It's one of the plays that's been successful for Wayne State. It's a quarterback rolling out, as you can see here on the replay, and then hitting the tight end, dragging across the backside over the middle. It was a little bit behind him, but Hall made a, a good adjustment to turn around and, and kept making that catch. As Stanley Edwards has said before, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Henson got that one and just went straight up the field. The co-captain on this team picks up the first down, first and ten. And a pitch back to Whitfield over the right side. He picks up some yardage as well. Tackled in the defensive backfield of Ferris State. Chip Egbert among the tacklers. Good positive yardage on first down by Whitfield. Three minutes and a one second left, but the Tartars, as you said, Stanley Edwards, still have some fight in them. Kevin Whitfield with a big pickup for Wayne State. They're driving. This is a sign of a team with some character. Although they're young, they're not going to give up the fight. They're going to come back and let you know, you're going to have to beat us. We're not going to give up and give it to you. Well, as you heard in the interview we had with Coach Brian Van Gorder, too, he says the important thing for this team is to have character, to develop a winning attitude, and uh, if you start with your mind, that's the, the beginning of a winning uh, season and a winning attitude. Tackle made again by Monty Brown, that name again. Anthony Frederick keeps the ball after rolling left. Frederick's rolling out of pocket pretty well here. You know, he's not just getting the ball game, getting started late. He's moving pretty good around in there in an offensive backfield. Freshman looks to the sideline to see what his offensive coaches are calling for. Third down and about three yards left. Ball is now down at the Ferris State 32. Again, the score, Ferris State 21, Wayne State 3. The Bulldogs able to break it open in this second half, particularly in the fourth quarter. Now, last week when they were losing to Hillsdale 36 to 14, they were down at halftime 36 to nothing and outscored Hillsdale 14 to nothing in the second half. So apparently Coach Otterbein has a second half team on his hands here. Yeah, he has a team that, uh, that obviously is a slow starter. He gets out to blocks a little late, but the race is not over with until someone crosses the finish line first. They seem to be a second half team. If they can stay within striking distance, you know, uh, in the second half from the first half, they obviously going to make a put up a fight in every game they're going to be in. Well, enough yardage for the first down for Wayne State. First and ten Tartars. Ball is at the Ferris State 29. And I've heard there are no moral victories in sports, but I'm sure the Tartars would love to score a touchdown before this game is over just to show they can do it as the official throws the flag on that play. Frederick's pretty poised for a freshman quarterback. I know it's real difficult to come in and and do, do a job and try to win a football game late in the game. But he's pretty poor. So I, I, I like what I see in him. I think he's going to be a, a, a good quarterback for the Tartars here in the future. The official conferring with the defensive captain of Ferris State, explaining the penalty. Well, we want to let you know that the executive producer of Tartar football is Harry Hutt. Today's game was produced and directed by Kevin Drost. The assistant director was Curtis Emerson, and our stage manager was Elizabeth Schultz, who did an excellent job. Thank you, Elizabeth. Ms. Diane Gonzalez was our technical director, and we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the fine work of our television technical staff who worked long hours to help make this television production possible. Frederick complete the haul. Hall is tackled from behind by Eric Woodhouse, a name we haven't called this game yet. I think he's got in for these last few plays. As quite a few white and new jerseys are out there on the field for Ferris State. This one is a lock. 21 to 3, Ferris State coming to Wayne State Tartar Stadium. 
and pulling out a victory. Ferris State trying to get their younger people in their second and third strings a little experience here. Trying to get them in and get their feet wet, so to speak, in this game. Wayne State's freshman quarterback, Frederick, is in, but not by choice. Mark Friday, the starting quarterback, went out with an injury, a pitch to Mr. Whitfield. He goes around the right side, finally tackled by Rich East. And a first down pickup for Wayne State. So perhaps the Tartars will be able to score a touchdown before this contest is over. If there are any high school backs watching this game, that was an excellent north and south running by Whitfield. He caught the pitch, could have bounced it outside, went for the sideline, but he leveled off and headed straight for the goal line. And if you did miss it, pick up some tapes of Stanley Edwards, and uh, you'll learn what to do that way, too. Yeah, in the <laughs> PSL archives. <laughs> hey, they played good football there. Well, Frederick oh, rolls man. left and is knocked out of bounds by one player, Tony Gowell, but he's hit out of bounds by Eric Woodhouse, and that draws a flag from the official. This is the time of game when uh, the coaching staff will make an attitude check. They'll see who's playing, see if any guys out there trying to quit before the game's over with. They want to find out who has their heart and their mind and the character still in the ball game. This is when coaches really find out what kind of player is going to be. It's not easy to be in this, this posi position and be still on the field playing your heart out. Sometimes you kind of want to go high, but you have to play. The game is still going on, you have to play. Especially when you have a young team, you want to know who's going to be there in the end. Exactly. Frederick rolls out right, keeps the ball himself, hurdles his own man before being tackled by the Ferris State Bulldogs. While we're giving thanks, too, we'd be remiss if we didn't thank the very lovely Mary Rogers, who's been our spotter, and spotter and statistician Mike Youngblood, a couple of Wayne State Tartar family members, and uh, we certainly appreciate what they're doing for us up here in the booth. Well, they made my job easier. This, it's been real difficult for me to make this adjustment coming from the field to the booth, but when you have fine people working like that, I hope, you, I, more easier. I hope they don't make me give it a plug. Mary Rogers is now coach at Marion High School women's basketball. If you want to see, uh, what are they, rated fifth in the state now? The varsity's rated fifth in the state, so uh, if you want to check out a good team and a good coach, check out Marion High School. There. She's the freshman coach, she tells me, but you, you'll see her hand in there. Talent is talent on every level. Well, the score, 21 to three, Ferris State over Wayne State. This one's just about over. The Tartars put up the good fight, especially in the first half. They led three nothing at halftime, but it has been all Burgundy and Gold Bulldogs in this second half. 21 unanswered points by Ferris State in this second half. We remind you once again that on Saturday, October 10th at 1.30, We'll have Butler versus Wayne State University. We invite you to tune into our next Tartar football telecast in two weeks on Saturday, October 10th at 1.30. The Butler Bulldogs visit Tartar Field. You know, Butler took the MIFC conference title last year. They had a 9-0 record. They still have some good players. On the field right now, Frederick attempts to complete a pass to Ray Ponder. The flag is thrown. Monty Brown was on the coverage for Ferris State. Penalty here. The call looks to be holding against Ferris State. So the Tartars knocking at the door finally in this contest. Ferris State trying to preserve their no touchdown game, but it doesn't look like it's going to be. Tartars certainly driving. Coach Van Gorder and his Tartars certainly have their work cut out for them two weeks from now, but they're up for the challenge. And by the way, that game on October 10th at 1.30 against Butler will be the Tartars' 56th 5-6 homecoming day. So please tune in for the game and all the festivities two weeks from now on Saturday, October 10th, when the Butler Bulldogs from Indiana take on the Wayne State Tartars at 1.30 p.m. right here on TV 62. Frederick rolls out right, looks, but no doing. Nice tackle by Mike Brooks. Stanley Edwards is signaling throw here. I guess he should have let go of the ball. There's a sign of a young quarterback. 
Uh, he thought he could run in for the for the touchdown, but what he could, what he should have done is just thrown the ball out of bounds and give himself another shot at making a touchdown. Well, it's all for naught. Ferris State finishes this game and wins it 21 to three. The Tartars do not score a touchdown, and Wayne State drops to one and three on the year. All in the MIFC conference. Ferris State now goes to. One and two in the conference, two and two overall. And again, the score, Ferris State 21, Wayne State 3. Well, Stan, players on the field shaking hands, congratulating each other. Stanley Edwards, uh, what do you see as the Tartars' problem, what they need to work on before the next game? Well, the, the biggest problem, is that, which no one can correct today, is that they're young. They're a young football team, and they got a lot of things they need to work on. A lot of them are just coming been out of high school and away from home only a year or two, and they're trying to make that adjustment, as well as going into a new program with a new coach and trying to learn a new system. Uh, they have a good football team. They have a lot they can build on. 21-3 uh, loss is a, is a very uh, big defeat. It's kind of hard. It's disheartening to get beat that bad. But you got to understand, there's some good days ahead for this Wayne State football club. And if they stick together, work hard, make the mistakes, and build on the mistakes that they made today, they got a pretty good football team the rest of the way. Well, these two teams have been playing each other for a long time. As you see, they shake hands on the field now. Good sportsmanship is all, always a sign of a, a good contest and a good rivalry. Uh, Ferris State, also a young team, now looking to take this victory over the Tartars and roll into some more victories and, and positive games for them as they continue in the MIFC season. The Tartars now have to go back to the drawing board, regroup, and decide exactly what it is they've been doing wrong and decide uh, what they're going to have to do to be prepared for the next game. Well, I think that the difference between the two teams, that they're both young, but uh, the coach from Ferris State's been there for about seven years now, and he's been there and he knows what to do, although his record doesn't indicate that his team has been doing very well, but, you know, He's been doing uh, an adequate job, and he showed it today. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll be right back after these commercial messages from our local station. This is the Wayne State Football Television Network. This is an effort to reach men and women who served in the United States Armed Forces. It concerns benefits reserved exclusively for honorably discharged veterans aged 30 to 75. Please use the toll-free number to respond. Call now for free information on a veterans-only life insurance plan that costs just $1 a week. When you qualify, you lock in the highest possible benefit amount available to you. These veterans' life insurance benefits are guaranteed never to go down. You are eligible if you serve during peacetime or war, active duty or reserves, or any branch of service. Call now, and you'll also get a free guide to veterans' benefits that explains government benefits you may be entitled to collect. Only veterans, their spouses and widows aged 30 to 75 qualify for this exclusive offer. Term life insurance for just $1 a week. Don't wait. Call this toll-free number now for your free information and free guide to veterans' benefits from Veterans Life Insurance Company. What does it take to win four Megabucks tournaments and take home almost $1 million in winning? It all starts with bass fishing know-how, the kind you'll find right here in the pages of Bassmaster magazine. But you can't find Bassmaster on the newsstand. It's available on a regular basis only to members of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. That's right, Larry Nixon. Bass fishing is a constantly changing sport, and to succeed, you got to stay on top of the newest techniques and tackle. That's why I started Bass 25 years ago, so that you can share the secrets of the pros. And as a member, you'll receive 10 big issues a year of Bassmaster magazine, plus many, many other benefits. So join Bass now, and I'll send you this free tackle pack. Call 1-800-641-5959 to join Bass. 1-800-641-5959. With your $15 paid membership, you'll receive 10 issues of Bassmaster magazine and full membership credentials. Plus your free 25th anniversary tackle pack with Man Shadow, Bill Norman's Deep Little End, Berkeley's Ultra Thin Line, and Berkeley's Power Slug. So call now. Well, we're back at Tartar Stadium where today the Wayne State Tartars took another conference defeat, losing to the Ferris State Bulldogs by a score of 21 to 3. It was all Tartars in the first half. They took a 3 to nothing halftime lead, but in the fourth quarter especially, but in the second half in total, it was all Bulldogs. 
The Tartars scored three in the second quarter. The Ferris State Bulldogs six in the third and then 15 in the fourth. Wayne State made a late drive but fell short. No touchdown for the Tartars in this game. And 21 to three, the final score, Wayne State losing. Stanley Edler was here with me. And Stanley, you were telling me that it was youth that really told on the Wayne State Tartars today. It was youth on, on, youth on both sides. Uh, Wayne State having a young football team as well as the young coaching staff. Uh, Fair State has a young football team, but an but experienced coach, and it showed in the second half. They made the proper adjustments at halftime, and they came out and they moved the ball. They mixed up running pass in the second half and moved downfield, and they were able to score consistently. Well, it looked like in the first half we weren't going to have any touchdowns in this game, a defensive battle, but then the touchdown started rolling in the second half. As you see here, Andrew Diggins, the big number 44 fullback for Ferris State, goes over the right side near the goal line, and that was the first touchdown for Ferris State, and uh, I guess that drive really set the tone for the second half. Well, it sure did, because they brought in T.D. Diggins, because I guess that's what he was <laughs> used for. He came in in goal line situations and ran the ball and consistently got touchdowns over that left side. Uh, they mixed the ball up, running pass in the second half, and as you can see here on the, on, the, on the goal line, they really ran the ball well in short yarded situations. Diggins right here came in, followed the guard in the back round, and it goes over for his second touchdown of the day, but what they found that in the interior line in Wayne State, it was stiff in the first half, but it got a little soft in the second half, and that allowed Wayne State, uh, excuse me, Fair State to move the ball up and downfield consistently. Diggins scored two touchdowns on pretty much the similar plays at opposite ends of the field. Mm -hmm. uh, that play, that second touchdown, was set up by a long pass play by the Ferris State Bulldogs, and really, it was the pass defense that failed Wayne State perhaps more than anything today. It made it real difficult because in a lot of situations early in the game on third and long, that Fair State was able to hit big plays and get the ball downfield. As you can see here, there's another play where, in, in the short yardage situation, where uh, all the receivers were moved out to the right and there was no secondary people in the sec, and they pop row up there in the middle, and there was no one in the secondary to challenge him. He bust through that first wave of tacklers and then on to a 63 yard touchdown run. Benny. Benny Rowe, a tough fullback for Ferris State, who's been having success all day, runs for a 63-yard touchdown against the Tartars, which was clearly the nail in the coffin for the Tartars today. Again, the Tartars go to one and three on the season, all within the Midwest Intercollegiate Football Conference. The record of the Ferris State Bulldogs improves to two and two. They are now one and two in the conference, and Michigan, Michigan. <laughs> I'm here with Stanley Edwards, who played for Michigan. I've got Michigan on the brain. Wayne State will play Butler University in their homecoming game here. And Stanley Edwards from Michigan, what is it that the Tartars are going to have to do to get ready for that game? This is a d difficult loss to take at home. When you get 20 beat by at least three touchdowns on your home field, it's very disheartening. They're going to have to look at the game field. They're going to have to throw it out of their mind, get ready Monday, and prepare for Butler because this game's over. With. Butler doesn't care what happened to you last week. They're going to be ready to play next week. Again, the score was Ferris State 21, Wayne State 3, and we'll be back with more Wayne State football after this message. One more, Jack. Most guys kick back on the weekend. Jack, on the other hand... Good. So, how do you feel? Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Tomorrow, we're sleeping in. Having nightmares about health care paperwork? Rest easy. At Health Alliance Plan, you only need... This form, your health deserves the best. Health Alliance Plan offers more doctors in more locations than any HMO in Michigan. Shouldn't you look into a new health care plan? Health Alliance Plan, your health deserves the best. Slamming. Jamming. Fancy passing. Thrills. A kinder, gentler game. Barkley swings on Lambeer, caught him good. They're going at it. Not. Catch all the action. Call for Piston Season Ticket Packages.
About 60% of the students who come here have graduated in the top 20% of their high school class, so it's lively. Uh, the students are here to learn, and they're serious about learning. Uh, the curriculum is broad. 300 different degree programs for students to explore and a very diverse student body. It's a lively place. It's a, a serious place. Uh, and education is what we do best in an urban setting. Wayne State football is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, the brewers of Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Health Alliance Plan, your health deserves the best. And by Elias Brothers Restaurant, home of the big boy. Well, we're back at Wayne State Stadium once again. The final score here today was the Ferris State Bulldogs 21, the Wayne State Tartars 3. Ferris State showing that it has some uh, offensive potency in the second half here. They're taking on uh, a Tartar team that had a tough defense, but on the air and on the ground, the Ferris State Bulldogs able to dog the uh, Wayne State Tartars here in the second half. Hi, I'm Cliff Russell. I was your play-by-play -play person for the game along with Stanley Edwards, the great running back from Michigan, Detroit Kettering, and Houston. I keep saying that because I'm so impressed by it. So good to be doing it with, here with uh, Stanley Edwards. And Stan, were there any things about Wayne State's offense or defense that you actually liked and thought were good things for the Tartars in this 18-point loss today? I think early on in the first half, the defense against the rush was pretty good, and I think they can build off that. They need to keep maintaining that uh, defensive rush by the front four. They need to tighten up a little bit in the defensive secondary and just get a little bit more diverse on offense early in the game so they won't be put in a bind and will have to pass in passing situations. Perhaps a little bit too conservative. As you look at the final stats here, uh, early on in the first half, they were very even, but boy, when you look at this here, except for time of possession, which Wayne actually won, it was all fair state. That was a tremendous uh, game. Uh, time of possession it was just about even, but as you go to the total yardage, that's where fair state had doubled, doubled in yardage. Uh, as you can see, the penalties there, there's a lot of penalties in this game. Eight by fair state, five by Wayne State, but what's more important is the bottom line score. Fair State 21, Wayne State 3. You know, the big stat that jumps out at me is in the rushing yardage. Ferris State had 220 yards to Wayne State's 71. And the Stan Edwards said during this game that football is won between the tackles. And the team that can control the ground game, the team that can control it between the tackles is the one that's going to win and come out on top. And clearly, Ferris State just had too much for Wayne State to, between the tackles here today. Of course, you talk about rushing 60 some of those yards came on that 63 yard touchdown run by Benny Rose. So certainly an outstanding effort by Ferris State today and uh, one they can build on and do better for the rest of this season. Yes, they would. Uh, the offensive line dominated game for uh, Wayne's for fair state. Joe Goff in the top 10 in rushing in Division two college football. But they had too many weapons on the offense for Fair State, and that's why they were able to capitalize on the rushing game. Well, again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining the broadcast. I'm Cliff Russell, along with Stanley Edwards. Again, the final score was Ferris State 21, Wayne State Tartars 3. Thank you very much, everybody, and please join us for more Charter Football.
I'm not sure what happened. I... There was a bullet from my shoulder. Doctors had to report gunshot wounds, Alice. But you need medical attention. You can't live with a... a bullet in your shoulder. One just have to try. <laughs> 